the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 235, 2 Chronicles 10 to 13. Shimea and the division of South and North. The country was divided due to Rehoboam's foolish choice, and now South and North kingdoms were to stand before God in competition with each other. First point. Due to Rehoboam's heavier yoke, Israel became divided into two countries, and Chronicles claims that this was due to Solomon's sins. 2 Chronicles 10 to 36 records how Israel was divided into North Israel and South Judah. This occurred during the reign of Solomon's son, Rehoboam. Rehoboam, who thought that all of Israel would welcome him as a king after returning from Shechem, was faced with a surprise when he heard their request. The people asked Rehoboam to lighten their workload and the taxes. At this, Rehoboam asked for three days to think things over. Rehoboam first went to the elders of Israel for advice. Their advice was as follows. If you will be kind to these people and please them, and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. The elders advised Rehoboam to follow in a kingdom of priests. Afterwards, Rehoboam went to his young servants, whom he grew up with, and they gave a very different opinion. Rehoboam became king at the age of 41, so his servants were around the same age. They did exactly as Samuel in the early days advised not to do. When Solomon ruled, God sent the prophet Ahiah to speak to Jeroboam. The reason Rehoboam made such a foolish decision was because of God's anger and punishment against Solomon, and this ultimately led to the division of the country into two. Second point, through the prophet Shimea, God made Rehoboam acknowledge North Israel as a country. Rehoboam quickly came out from Shechem, and excluding the tribe of Levi, there are many from the twelve tribes who tried to follow Jeroboam to North Israel. Rehoboam ruled this as a coup d'etat and mustered the tribe of Judah and Benjamin to go to war against Jeroboam. Rehoboam wanted to make sure that the ten tribes did not become solely divided at Jeroboam's people. But at this point, God sent the prophet Shimea to stop Rehoboam. Shimea went to deliver God's message in order to stop the war between North Israel and South Judah. He also later delivered God's message when the king of Egypt came to attack. When Rehoboam heard God's message from Shimea, he obeyed, and so thankfully the war did not happen. The light of Chronicles interprets Rehoboam's obedience as God's blessing. Rehoboam did his best to make the areas of South Judah as safe as possible. Third point, right after the division of Israel, the priests and the Levites who lived in the north came to South Judah. When the country became divided, the priests and Levites who lived in the north made their way to South Judah. These people wanted to be near the Jerusalem temple, where the Lord's presence dwelt. The reason these people wanted to come to South Judah was because of Jeroboam's sins, which ultimately made the way of Jeroboam. The way of Jeroboam firstly ordained ordinary people as priests. Secondly, he changed the three annual festivals of a kingdom of priests and made the people go to worship golden calves in Dan and Bethel. 
Thirdly, he changed the dates and the logistics of the annual festivals. With the people who came to South Judah, Rehoboam went in the way of David for three years. After appointing Abijah as the next king, Rehoboam distributed his fortune to his other sons and found them many wives. Rehoboam had 18 wives and 60 concubines, who bore him eight, eight children. This was much like his father Solomon. Fourth point, Rehoboam, who was proud at first, was attacked by Egypt and became a pitiful king. Rehoboam and South Judah started to fall. Like Jeroboam in North Israel, Rehoboam also started to worship idols. Rehoboam left God's laws and worshipped idols. And so, according to the laws written in Leviticus, he was attacked by Egypt. This was the warning that was given that no matter how secure or strong the walls were, they would tumble down. When Egypt attacked South Judah, God rebuked South Judah through the prophet Shimei. God then declared punishment on them, and only then Rehoboam and his subjects repented. The Book of Kings does not record Rehoboam's repentance, but Chronicles records it. So when Rehoboam and the people of South Judah repented before God, God did not destroy them. However, they were to be punished for their sins. Due to their idol worship, their punishment was being attacked by Egypt. All of Solomon's golden shields were taken, and so South Judah had to use bronze weapons. After this incident, Rehoboam died. The final evaluation regarding Rehoboam was that he failed to go in the way of David. Fifth point. After the death of Rehoboam, his son Abijah made war with Jeroboam. Wars continued after Rehoboam's death with Jeroboam, when Abijah became the next king of South Judah. This time, it grew into a full-scale national war. Before the fighting began, Abijah gave a speech to the people of North Israel and Jeroboam. He firstly mentioned the salt covenant God made with David. He secondly claimed that Jeroboam, who was the servant of Solomon, went against his king, which was treason. Rather than referring to the words of Shimeiah, who passed on the message of God, Abijah claimed that Jeroboam wrongfully took North Israel. Although Rehoboam was able to obey God's words through Shimeiah, Abijah chose to ignore it. Abijah also rebuked Jeroboam for setting up the golden calves and making anybody into priests. He also proclaimed that God would be with the South Judah, and so North Israel was bound to lose. In other words, he stressed that God appointed the legitimate kings as David and his descendants. Abijah made the priests blow their trumpets as a sign that God would give South Judah victory. Abijah, moreover, warned North Israel not to fight against God. Despite Abijah's grand speech, war still progressed. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondok app. The Tondok app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondok app.